Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to your daily dose of scripture news and commentary. I'm Stan Grant. Today is January the 26th, 2024. I want to close out the week with uh, just kind of an update of what's going on down in Texas. So I've donned the cowboy hat today. We've got the 10 gallon hat on. I think we're going to entitle this broadcast, this video, Don't Mess With Texas. It was either that or remember the Alamo, but, you know, that didn't turn out so well for Texans, at least while that was unfolding. Um, so, yeah, don't mess with Texas. Don't mock the cowboy hat. I do have cows on the property during the summer, so it's not all hat, no cattle. All right. Um, I just want to give uh, kind of an update of some things that are going on down there. I've been alluding to them over the course of the week in, in brief, and let me just throw this map up on your screen here i'll get to this in a minute but as i've been as i've been reporting this week as you've been seeing in the media um there's kind of a a kerfuffle that's unfolding down in texas between texas and the federal government uh, texas put up razor wire on a portion of the border and and they said to the illegals and to the globalist community no access to the united states of america no access to texas well, the federal government, our federal government, didn't like that because they like the invasion that's taking place down there. They want it to keep happening. And so, of course, the federal government appealed to the Supreme Court, which is a federal institution, and uh, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled on behalf of the feds. And they said, you know, it's the federale's job to 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 keep the nation secure. Texas is out of line. Texas is overstepping its bounds. The feds have to keep the border secure. So you can go down there and you can cut the razor wire. Yeah. So anyway, that's what the feds uh, decided to do. They were going to go ahead and cut the razor wire. Well, then it escalated this week because Governor Abbott came out. Uh, Greg Abbott said essentially he made a declaration and he said the federal government has broken its trust with the states we have a right to defend ourselves and our sovereignty because the feds aren't doing it for us the administration is corrupt rotten to the core and is not adhering to its constitutional obligations to we the people and to the states and so governor abbott said the national guard is going to report directly to me and they're going to continue to put up razor wire on the southern border to keep all these illegals from coming in. Well, the feds don't like that, of course. Um, there have been calls by, by some Democrats for Biden to step in and to federalize the Texas National Guard. So what that means is that Biden would have to go in with the army, take over command of the Texas National Guard, and then the Texas National Guard would become an extension of federal policy and they would have to take orders from the commander in chief. Um, whiz bang is what some of them call him. He's quite a guy. So anyway, that's kind of where things were at as of yesterday. Well, what that brings us to is this map because, uh, when Greg Abbott said, I'm going to continue to defend our Southern border, there are several states, and you'll notice that they're red states, they decided to step up and support Governor Abbott. Um, yesterday afternoon, uh, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds and 24 other additional states basically issued a statement on, on what was taking place on the southern border. And let me just read this statement to you here real quick. And I quote, President Biden and his administration have left Americans in our country completely vulnerable to unprecedented illegal immigration pouring across the southern border. Instead of upholding the rule of law and securing the border, the Biden administration has attacked and sued Texas for stepping up to protect American citizens from historic levels of illegal immigration, deadly drugs like fentanyl and terrorists entering our country. We stand in solidarity with our fellow governor, Greg Abbott, and the state of Texas in utilizing every tool and strategy, including razor wire fences, to secure the border. We do it in part because the Biden administration is refusing to enforce immigration laws already on the books and is illegally, and is illegally allowing mass parole across America of migrants who entered our country illegally. The authors of the U.S. Constitution made clear that at times like this, 
States have a right of self-defense under Article 4, Section 4, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 of the United States Constitution because the Biden administration has abdicated its constitutional compact duties to the states. Texas has every legal justification to protect the sovereignty of our states and our nation. End quote. Quite a mouthful by Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds. Well, there are 24 other governors that signed on with that. And what this map illustrates is who those governors are. The, the red states there are the states that have signed on um, to support um, the, the Texas National Guard and Governor Abbott. Um, so really what this comes down to is, is that since not since the year 1860 have we seen the states push back so hard against federal government. We, we've not seen this many states unite against federal overreach um, since that particular time and challenge the authority of the federal government in state affairs. And it's growing. There's a lot of people that are, that are uh, starting to pay attention to this in the news. And, and the issue has not yet gone away this morning. Um, and it's not going to go away anytime here soon. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. Now, <clears throat> this is being reported widely by Russian media. I, I track some, some Russian media sites. I follow some Russian, very pro-Russian, pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel, anti-U.S. Uh, pages on Telegram, news outlets on Telegram. And I, I follow them just because I want to see what the other side is saying. I know that Russia is Gog, according to the scripture, and we're going to come into conflict with Gog. And so I follow what they're saying because I want to get a temperature for the opposition. I want to see where they're at. I want to see what their thinking is. Well, I've been following these Russian sites. And th this, this rift that's taking place within our nation is being widely trumpeted. By, by Russian media um, to the Russian people and to Russian sympathizers about what's taking place in America. And they're emphasizing our present weakness and the troubles that are taking place here. And what they're, what they're showing is, is that the stats, the number of states and the number of people within the United States that are opposed to all of this federal level overreach, it's comparable to when the breakup of the Soviet Union occurred back in the 1980s. And, and so they're exploiting that. They're showing how weak the United States is. Uh, and the bottom line is, is that they smell blood in the water. And, and honestly, I think they're putting the blood in the water because rest assured, Russia and Marxist countries are the ones behind the illegal immigration that's taking place. I'm sorry, it's not illegal immigration. It's an illegal invasion. I've got to make sure I, I get the narrative right there. Create the narrative. <clears throat> Um, so Russia's really behind this. They, they have been, they have been um, pushing other nations, other Marxist and, and corrupt nations to, to invade us from the South. And so they're putting the blood in the water. Then they smell the blood in the water. So then they can say to the rest of the world and to all of their proxy states, see, it's working. See how weak the United States is. The United States is on the verge of collapse. They're having really bad troubles over there. And so they're exploiting it, I believe, to foment revolution within America over this one singular issue. It's a flashpoint. So I got to thinking about this and, you know, I, I thought, what are the possible scenarios that are in play here? Because I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious of what's going on because this just kind of popped up out of nowhere. So what are the possible scenarios? Well, I could think of four, and here's what they are. Number one is that this is just possible political theater, and it's just meant to bolster the GOP, the Republican Party. Because again, a lot of your red states signed on. So it could be that the GOP got together and said, hey, let's, let's turn this into a big issue now and make it look like a big deal because we want to you know, win the election that's coming up in 2024, and then happy days will be here again. Well, bear in mind that the GOP is part of the problem. The GOP has had time and even decades to secure the southern border, and it's chosen not to. 
So it's part of the problem. And I, and I view the Democratic Party as the opposition for sure, but I kind of view the GOP as the controlled opposition. And, and, and there are elements in that party, there's elements in the Republican Party that want this invasion to continue. Well, okay, so let's go with that. Let's, let's, say they all, let's say the GOP conspired and said this is going to be an election issue. We're going to blow this up and make this an issue so that we win more seats in November. Well, it still comes down to this fundamental question. Even if that's what's happening, what is the right thing to do? Well, in my mind, the right thing to do is still to secure the southern border and the northern border, for that matter. We've got to secure our borders. That's the right thing to do. It doesn't matter what nefarious group might be behind all of this. We still have to secure that southern border. And so uh, to that, I would say GOP be damned, secure the southern border. Bottom line. And as I said, these states have even committed quite possibly to sending in their National Guards to help the Texas National Guard do just that. So the right thing to do, even if, even if this is, you know, some, some issue to bolster the GOP, is that we've got to secure the southern border. All right, so that's option number one. Here's option number two. <clears throat> Greg Abbott is just a WEF puppet, World Economic Forum puppet. He's part of the Davos crowd, which he is. And that this is a PSYOP. He's being used to foment unrest within the United States, and he's just the tool that's in play right now. Um, my brother said this morning, he said, we need to follow the buses, not the razor wire. Well, that's a true statement because the razor wire is just on one portion of the border. But those buses, the, 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 illegal, the illegal invasion is still taking place in other parts of the border. All right, so the buses are still are still being used. They're being funded by the federal government um, to bring people into this nation. So let's say that they are using this to foment unrest and that it's a PSYOP. Well, here's what that tells me. If they're doing that, then they think now is the time and they think that America is ripe for unrest and they want it to happen. Okay, so let's play that card. If that's the case, it still comes down to this. What's the right thing to do? Well, the right thing to do is World Economic Forum be damned. We're a sovereign nation. We still need to secure the southern border. Okay, so that's just a given. We've got to do that. Well, here's the third option then. Greg Abbott, governor of Texas, is a true patriot. That, that, that he truly is a nationalist. I don't believe that. I only think that there's one nationalist that I know of that's, that's in a, a place of political power or soon to be political power, that being Trump. But, but then we still have to ask the question, if Greg Abbott is a true patriot, let's say that this guy is not a globalist at heart, that he is a true patriot. Well, then globalism be damned. And the right thing to do is still to secure the southern border. So in all three cases, we still have to secure the southern border. You, you come to the same, the same conclusion regardless of, of what the motivation is behind this. And then finally, I, I kind of asked myself the question this morning, let's just play that card and ask the question, what would happen if this did come down to civil war? What would happen if this did come down to there being an uprising within the United States over this issue? Well, question. Could the blue states really muster any opposition to the red states? And, and bear in mind that there are no blue states. There are blue cities, but there are no blue states. And I think a lot of these supposed blue states are really not blue states. I think they've been stealing the vote, uh, perhaps for years and even decades. And so, uh, you know, Dominion... Or, or corruption within the system can help you steal votes, but that's not the real count. The real count is Bubba. The real, the real numbers are the Bubbas in all of the states that are all gun owners, and their votes have been stolen, but their guns haven't been stolen. And so, and so would the blue states be neutralized by, by the real red population, not the Dominion population, but the real true Bubba population within the red states 
or within the blue states, and they all own weapons? Would the blue states be neutralized by their own citizenry that want to support Texas and want our southern border secured? Well, if that's the case, if it came down to that, red states win. In my mind, it really wouldn't even be a contest at that point because I think there's a good potential that the red states would be, or, or the blue states would be neutralized just like that by Bubba. That's a possibility. Again, it's just hypothesis. Now, here's the reason that I wanted to bring this up. Um, <clears throat> you know, I call this scripture news and commentary. Um, the real reason I wanted to play on this today and, and really kind of end the week with all of this is because scripture speaks of this illegal invasion of our nation. This, what's taking place right now, is actually in the scripture. Now, a lot of people don't know that, but that's because they don't know who America is in the Bible. And so because they don't know who America is in the Bible, they don't know what to look for. Hosea speaks to this very issues. Uh, he says, strangers have devoured his strength, meaning our nation, our people group. Strangers have come in, that's foreigners, foreign invaders. They've come in and sucked us dry, and that's exactly what's happening here. So Hosea speaks to this. Jesus even speaks to this in one of his parables, a couple of his parables, actually. And so this issue of illegal immigration, it's a flashpoint to judgment. It's a tipping point that brings everything to a head within our nation. And again, this is according to Scripture, not just headlines analysis, but that's according to Scripture. So what we're seeing right now in the headlines is all end game material, and it's all part of the grand finale. So I just want to say this. This issue is not going to go away with an election. It's not going to be like, you know, if the GOP wins a whole bunch of seats in November that, oh, yay, happy days are here again because the controlled opposition is now in power. Friends, this will not go away. It's gonna continue until it comes to a head, until everything goes full tilt, the meltdown occurs, and God's judgment occurs upon this nation, and then everything corrupt is gonna be destroyed as a result of God stepping in. And so this is a picture, this is a piece of the final judgment, the final picture that God has in mind for America. So here's what this tells me. America exists on borrowed time. Now, if you want to know more about, about where you can find this in Scripture, theologically, if you want the underpinnings for that and the teachings for that, I'm going to put a couple of links in my videos on Patreon that, that, that speak directly to this issue. You might want to watch those videos because the point of this becoming a flashpoint and it, and it overflowing and becoming a cause for war within the nation appears to be on us. That point appears to be drawing ever so close, and then once it all goes to a head, once it all comes to a head, life as we know it is over. But, you know, that's consistent with my word for America that I opened up the year with uh, in the broadcast for the first two weeks of January. God is going to bring about the complete destruction and dissolution of American government, and power is going to be returned to the people according to God's word. So you might want to do your homework, listen to those videos, the, the teaching videos on Patreon, and then also go back and listen to my first uh, two weeks of videos for this calendar year. They speak to that issue. Father, I pray for your people this day. Lord, Lord your word says that we're to watch and pray. Father, help us to understand as we see the headlines unfolding before us. Help us to understand where to plug them into the Word of God, to know what's unfolding, and then what it is that we must do, Father God, to prepare and to be ready for what it is that comes next. Father, you've given us your Word. It's your playbook. It shows us what's going to happen next, and we thank you for your Word. We put our firm reliance in your Word as well. Almighty God. Father, bless your people this weekend, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, well, as the scripture says, continue to watch and pray, but for now, stand out. I'll see you in my next video.